there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Keenan Lafferty. Today is March 9, 2017, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 330, where we learn to be better artists. And today we're going to be talking about Artist Alley because I just came back from Seattle Comic Con, and a viewer of the show and a guest of the con came up to me and asked, Keenan, can you do a show on becoming a con artist, right? As I like to call it, or exhibiting at Artist Alley, a nicer way to say it. And I provided a bunch of useful tips, and we're going to be dissecting this booth, how you yourself can go out there, strike out on your own, go and sell a bunch of prints, meet a bunch of awesome people, and have a good time. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down a very special place, and that is, of course, the lovely lane. So journey with me over to tinyurl slash kncalefanart, and you'll be prompted with this secret link called See All. If you click on that, then you will be indeed dazzled by the amazing pieces that you guys at home have been submitting. And if you have not yet come out of your shell, then please consider subscribing or liking, submitting your own pictures, and then you could be scrolling on by next week. Yes, that could be you right there, that awesome Ari, or that awesome girl with the roses coming out of her eyes. I thought that one was really cool. Definitely go check it out. All right, and that brings us, I think that catches us up. Where were we? Yes, we are caught up. All right, so. Yes, I had a great time at the con, and I'm really excited to talk about this with you guys today. And just for reference, everything that I'm going to be talking about today uh, ha is basically stolen from an article that my girlfriend wrote. So that's going to be down in the description if you want to get this in more of a text format. However, I do have a couple things to add. No, no offense, Joy, but I have a couple things that I need to add myself. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and dissect this thing one by one, and let's just look at this picture. Because there are things that are going well, there's things that I'm doing right and things that I'm doing wrong, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's start with the banner. Let's start with the dimensions of your table, right? And let's talk about, well, let's talk about before you even arrive here, okay? Because there's a couple things that we need to talk about. A couple things that we need to talk about. And this is a little bit more of a, a little bit more, it's kind of like a thoughtful, but it's a little bit more of a talky, talky show. Talking show. It's just kind of like relaxing, recalibrating, recalibrating, getting back into the the feel of like doing the show every week. It feels really weird to let a week go by and like just like take a vacation from it. But I am back. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So uh, for cons, for cons. So before the con, you need to ask yourself a couple very important questions. And that is, in fact, let me go ahead and just pull up the stuff that I took to the con. And I can show you guys that stuff. So. Uh, that way you have something to look at instead of just my freaking face. So there we go. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Okay, so for the con, I'm just going to cycle through these as we talk. Let's see, should I, if I make this full screen, is it going to totally mess up? Ah, it totally does, dang it. I, I don't know what that looks like on the actual screen, but I'm just going to leave it like this. It looks much better with a black background, but whatever. Okay, so there's a couple things you need to ask yourself before you're ready to go to a con. And that is, do you want to be a fan artist, right? Do you want to be creating stuff that already exists, like League of Legends? Like uh, splash art, you know, uh, selling your previously made splash art for League of Legends? Uh, do you want to be doing stuff like uh, Sword Art Online? Or do you want to be doing things that are original, such as made of metal? Made of metal. <laughs> And the, it's very important that you ask yourself this question, or you can do a combination of both. But here's the most important thing that I've realized when you go into doing a con, is you need to know your target audience. You need to know kind of what what this con is dedicated to, and you need to know uh, basically what people are looking for. But in general, more often, people are going to be looking for fan art. Most often, people are gonna be wanting to look for this stuff. And the reason why is they don't have anything necessarily against you or your own ideas or your own original characters. It's just that they haven't spent enough time with them yet. They haven't spent enough time to get familiar. They don't know their stories. They don't know what they represent. They don't know if they like them. And to be honest, in, uh, in cons, it's very easy to just quickly get overwhelmed because you have to think about it. It's not just your booth there. Oftentimes, you're going to be surrounded by hundreds of other artists hundreds and thousands of other people trying to sell their products and promote their, you know, promote their thing. And, you know, so you can't take it too personally when someone only has a few seconds to connect with your art. And if it's not something that they recognize, then oftentimes they might just walk on by. So uh, this is what I like to deem 
the um, you have to think about it as well both of them are businesses but you have to be willing to understand that if you're trying to promote something that is your own doing such as me with Emma or made of metal then you're looking at it as more of an investment. You want to invest this money, right? Let's, and we'll talk about costs for booths because that's the most important thing that you need to know uh, to get started. Um, uh, booths are about, in my experience, they run from about 200 to $400. So you have to think about that. Am I willing to spend 200 to $400 to get thousands of people to look at this original thing, to look at my original characters? And, uh, and you have to be a little bit more. Here's another thing that you need to, you need to be ready for. You need to be ready to be a little bit more vocal. And whenever I have been out promoting Emma, where the heck? Well, it's back here, here you go. Whenever I've been out promoting Emma, I'm always way more vocal. In fact, I always have a bunch of cards laid out. I'm always yelling at people. Well, not like annoyingly, but I'm always like, hey, there's a free comic over here. Free online comic, guys. Come on over, check it out. Free online, and people love free, right? Because it doesn't matter who you are. If you're walking around at a con, you hear somebody yelling free stuff, they're gonna come over and take a look. And that is my first advice to you, that if you wanna have something original, you wanna be promoting your own comic, have something that you're gonna give to people. Have something you know similar to how I started the comic. It's like, I don't expect you to come over, I don't expect you to buy my comic once I make it. No, I release it all online for free. And that is how you get people invested in your work first off, if it's something original. If you're doing fan art, stuff like this, asana, not necessarily needed because people are gonna be drawn over by your style. They're gonna be drawn over by uh, what, the way that you chose to render the character or the character itself. You know, so you have a lot of things that are working to your advantage, okay? So, okay, so that's the first thing I would say is can, remember that at all times you need to be ready to just think that it's just an investment. Don't expect to make uh, don't expect to like set off and like it's going to be this big profitable business right off the beginning. It can be, but at the beginning you're going to be learning a lot. You're going to be taking a lot of experiences in, and especially if you have your own original characters, do not expect that to be profitable. It is an investment in advertising, okay? It's an advertisement. Okay, finding a con. Finding a con. Now, finding a con is very fun because it's very simple. All you have to do is you have to take a look at, hey, what town do I live in? Hey, what neighboring cities around me do uh could i visit are there any cons happening there and then type in that city and type in convention type in that city and comic con convention right for me it's salt lake salt lake was the first comic con that i went to and it's really nice to do a local one first because you can quickly gauge whether this is going to be something that you like uh in my first con i barely like i didn't have any prints like i didn't have any of these i didn't have like this type of stuff or like these type of things all I did for my first con was I made a banner, I got a table, and I like, like my first display was actually pretty legit. I had like a TV and everything. I bought the power to like hook up the TV, and there was Emma playing in the background. And then I was like, but it was like so weird because I was doing like original cards, like three by five cards. A lot of you remember who have been watching the show for a while, you saw me actually drawing those. I did some episodes where I did those real time. But that was all that there was. It was just like a bunch of three by five cards with my sketches on them. And then I, take, I took my portfolio, right, which people ended up taking the pieces out of and buying them because I didn't have anything else at the table. I literally had like five original pieces and then my portfolio, which I just wanted people to look at, right? And people ended up buying that. And uh, that was my first con. And I think I made like, I think I made like $200. I made my booth back and then $200. So I think total that was like $400. And, th and to me, that was like awesome. I was like, wow, that's so cool. I can't believe this first con was such a success. And it was, I learned a lot. Uh, mostly the fact that, um, mostly just about like displays and seeing the way that other artists did their displays. And it really got me thinking a lot. So um, yeah, that's another thing that you can do. You can get ideas from other artists and don't be afraid to steal, right? Don't be afraid to steal. Don't be like, oh man, oh, this person's doing it that way. I couldn't possibly take that. That would be wrong. That would be bad, okay? Don't feel bad about that, okay? That's what we're all doing. All artists are stealing from everybody. It's time to stop feeling bad. Okay, next, booking travel, hotel. Okay, so let's say that you do do your your uh, local con and you're like, all right, I'm ready to go out. I'm ready to strike out on my own, do some more um, in the neighboring cities or go to a completely different state. Like I went up to Seattle. Uh, you have to be ready to, that's like, a, like there's a lot more money that you're gonna be spending on your 
Uh, you're going to be booking a car, a car, right? You're going to be getting a rental car, possibly. You're going to be getting a hotel, and you're going to be getting a flight. So that's another thing you need to keep in mind. It's like, am I ready? Am I okay with either investing in this to go out here and promote myself, or do I think that I can sell enough to make this cost back so it can be profitable, okay? So uh, that's why I say local cons first. Focus on those local cons, even if they're small. Even if they're small little rinky-dink cons. It doesn't matter. Do those first to get a feel for it. Okay, next. Designing a booth. Designing a booth. Okay, we can finally get to this now. Okay, so <laughs> designing a booth. Here's the main things that you're gonna want when you go to your booth. Where is my stylus? There we go. Okay guys, so the first thing that you'll want, and this is obviously optional, but this is what I chose to do, is you wanna know that when you buy a table in Artist Alley, that your dimensions are six feet. You got six feet right here. Six feet, okay? So that is how wide, right? It says 11, oh, sorry, that's very misleading. Uh, this is 11 feet tall, okay? But that's gonna come into play in just a moment. The banner itself is six feet, okay? So if you are gonna get a banner, or if you're planning on making some sort of a display, always plan on six feet wide. Um, and that's a good place to start, okay? So that's what I did. Got a banner, made six feet, has my name on it, not necessary, but it's nice. The main thing that you want to consider is um, do not, do not under any circumstances go to the con without something behind you. You've got to have something here because if you don't and you just lay your prints on the table, people are just going to walk on by because unfortunately, like I said, at the con, People are just, they don't have time to look down. They don't have time to like look at every single table. Their eyes are fixated at the, like right at eye level. They're looking left, they're looking right. Looking left, looking right. And if they don't see something that catches their eye, right, on eye level, then they're not gonna really, you're, you're limiting yourself to the people whose attention you might catch, okay? So make sure that you have something here. Um, and my greatest advice to you guys is that if you're doing prints, to do something like this. And we'll get to how I actually kind of secured all of those prints on there. It's not as hard as you think. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the first thing. The first thing is you need something that's gonna hold all this up. Now, what is that? Well, it's none other than our good old Polaroid photo backdrop stand. And you can get one on Amazon. It's also in that article that I was talking about that my girl wrote. You can check that out. Uh, but this thing has been a lifesaver. I love this thing because it's actually really handy because you can check this at the airport as well. Uh, and it's really easy. It comes in this cool little carrying case. Uh, these things, like, it's very stable. It goes up to 11 feet. That was what this thing was. 11 feet, sticks way up in the air. Um, and it's easy to set up, even if you're by yourself. Although I wouldn't suggest going by yourself, but that's, I'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, so what I do is you set up each of these things, right? Basically, it's like these poles, right, that you set up. And then there's this little doohickey that kind of connects the two at the top. Um, and this is the part that you want to be six feet, right there, six feet at the top, okay? And that's probably really hard for you to read, so let's go ahead and do that. Six feet, okay? Um, this thing is such a lifesaver. And then you can lay your, um, you can put your banner on top of it or you can just begin laying prints on top and just kind of hanging them down. But if you do decide to do a banner or even prints, highly recommend that you get yourselves one of these or a few of these things. These are clamps, clamps, really, really awesome clamps. And you can see those are right here, 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 and here. You could even put one over here, but I kind of like hooked it. There's a little part of the thing where I could like stick the banner on. That's actually like the little tightener screw that goes on here. Um, but yeah, I just, I use those things to, <laughs> I use those to my advantage. So moving on to the next part. So we got that. We got your photo stand. We got your clamps. Secure those things on there. Next, you're going to be taking your prints. You're going to be taking your actual, your actual prints that you printed out. And I wonder if I should get into this yet. Well, regardless, regardless of what size your prints are, these ones are 12 by 18. Um, I highly recommend trying to make all your prints about the same size, and that is gonna come in handy when you do this. Actually, it's not super necessary that you make them all the same size, but it definitely makes it a little bit easier for like connecting and making displays like this. 
Now, the way that we're doing this is we've got the, the prints literally just taped. They're taped uh, with blue tape. Now, it's important that you use blue tape and not packing tape or anything that's too sticky because you want to be able to disassemble this at the end of the show. And if it's too sticky, it's going to like rip the print apart. It's going to be all sticking to everything. It's going to be terrible, okay? It's not going to be a good time. So make sure that you get blue tape. I highly recommend blue tape. So it's literally just taped to the back of this. Like you do the little roll, right? You make the little tape roll. St it's stuck on like right there, right there, right there, right? And that's a good start. And then we kind of like wrap it around, around the backside of the banner. And then from there, what we're doing is we're just taping prints together, taping prints together. And, and they look like this on the backside. So you do it like this. I think we put like one like that, one like this, one like that. And then you just tape the prints together and then you hang them down. Uh, also, uh, by the bottom of the banner, the bottom of the banner is right around here. You can see, oh, look at that. Coincidentally, it lines up with all of these prints and guess what's behind those prints. Yep, a lot of tape. A lot of tape is securing these prints to the back of the banner, back of the banner. And then again, same thing. All these prints are hanging down, hanging down, hanging down, hanging down. So you basically create a big collage, a big square collage that hangs down and the tape holds it together quite well. All right, so now that we talked about prints, now that we talked about securing your prints, we need to talk about something that's very important. The actual product, we need to talk about, hey, Okay, well, we have this thing, but how do we know where to go? How do we know where to get it printed? How do we know what dimensions it needs to be? How do we know what DPI it needs to be? You know, very important things that people often overlook. Also, like, hmm, sometimes printers, print the, the, the prints come out a little bit darker. Maybe I should do a little bit of correction in Photoshop before I send it off, right? So, let's talk about that. And for this example, we're gonna talk about Diva. The latest piece that we finished, really like it. It was actually really popular at the show. I was really happy that people resonated with it. I didn't think it was gonna be as big of a hit as it was, but <laughs> it was really awesome. So let's talk about the unfortunate thing that happens when we wanna to go to print. And that is, okay, so we have this picture here. If we go to image and we go to image size, we see that our, this original image was created at 16 by nine at 300 DPI, right? Which is what everybody should be doing, right? Uh, <laughs> what everybody should be doing because it makes a nice desktop because it's a nice ratio. And the problem with this is that once you go to print, unfortunately, this is not a 16 by nine ratio. In fact, this is 12 by 18. This is 12 by 18, which luckily I made this one 12 by 18. The Splatoon piece was done like this because I wanted to make it a print eventually. But most of the time I'm working 16 by nine. So here's something that's gonna happen when you decide that you wanna go to print. You're gonna hit A, Control A, Control C, and then you're gonna create a new canvas, right, that is, 12 by 18 at 300 DPI. Now the reason why it's 300 DPI is because that is the number that printers love. Printers love 300 DPI, it's the magic number. Who knows why, but 300 DPI works really well for print. And then you're gonna go 12 by 18. And then when you put in your original picture, it's gonna be a little bit small. It's gonna be small because your dimensions were different, but more importantly, part of your piece is going to have to get cut off, okay? So that's something that you need to consider if you made a picture in this ratio, okay? And you can see I didn't do it like this because the computer screen's totally cut off. I wanted a little bit of that Twitch chat showing. So I kind of moved it over to the right, hit it like this. Now, ideally you don't want to be upsizing this much either because there's gonna be a little bit of distortion that happens. Luckily it's not that bad because it wasn't upsized too big. But if you're planning on making big prints, make sure the original piece is pretty close to that original size. You don't wanna be taking something that you made like a postcard design, like a five by seven, tiny little thing, and then stretching it out. Because when you go to print it, it's gonna be very, very noticeable. You're gonna see all kinds of like little distortions and pixelations, it's gonna look like crap. So don't do that. Do not do that. Okay, so once we got that done, yeah, so I chose to go 12 by 18. Uh, other common sizes are five by seven, if you wanna do small prints, 11 by 17, medium prints, 12 by 18, 13 by 19, and I'm sure there's a whole range in between. But uh, make sure that you figure out what, make sure you figure out what your dimensions for your pieces are gonna be. This one was 12 by 18. This one is 12 by 12. 
okay? And then the next thing that you wanna do is you want to make sure that you buy bags. You wanna make sure that you get bags. Notice how this isn't just the print. I don't just hand over a print to somebody. No, they're gonna get their fingerprints all over it. No, they're gonna they're gonna smudge the, the golden signature on there. No, you don't want that stuff. You wanna be able to protect it. It's, it's valuable. You wanna give it to somebody and make sure that it's protected. So make sure that you invest in some poly bags. I think they're called flap seal, flap seal poly bags. And I get mine off of clearbags.com, but you can also find them on Amazon, okay? And those are these things right here, see? So, well, I mean, I already showed you what they were. But yeah, clear bags, clear bags are awesome. Another thing that you wanna get is get a couple Sharpies because I like to sign all my pieces and I'm sure that the people that are buying your stuff will also love to have it signed by the artist. So make sure that you bring some golden Sharpies or uh, regular black Sharpies, whatever color you want. Just something to write on, something to sign. It also comes in handy if you wanna make like last minute signs, like last one or special sale or anything, any sort of like information that you might want to get across. It's always good to have pens handy Always good to have extra cards handy, just in case you wanna do that. Okay, moving back to this next part. Let's see, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Let me consult the notes. Mm, looks like we're doing good. Post-its are good. Uh, business cards are very important. Make sure you have a business card, or in my case, I forgot my business cards because I'm really good like that. <laughs> what I did was I took a card. I took an card, right? And I just wrote all my information and I stuck it on the table and I just had people take a picture of it, right? It was all my social media, just wrote it on the back of a card. And that works well too. If you don't wanna like print a bunch of business cards, uh, ideally you wanna, especially if you're trying to market yourself, you wanna have your own business card. Moo.com is a highly recommended one because you can put, uh, you can make a special backing for every single one, different pieces of your art. You can really customize it, make it look really good, okay? So, uh, I think that takes us now to the actual con. Actual con. Pricing, square readers, deals, all that stuff. Let's talk about that. Uh, but before we actually talk about that, let me talk about why there's a big no sign right here. The reason why this big no sign is right here is because I want you guys to understand that in addition to have something behind you, in addition to having this awesome banner behind you, you don't wanna just lay your stuff on the table flat, okay? Don't lay your stuff on the table flat. Ideally, you wanna have something that props up your art, something that takes it from this angle to this angle, so that way, again, it's facing towards your viewers, it's facing towards your audience, okay? Stuff on the table, not necessarily interesting, right? Once it gets propped up, then it's gonna be much more interesting. And there's all kinds of things that you can use to prop it up. I actually ended up making me and my girl just ended up making stuff out of cards to like prop it up because we forgot, we forgot stuff. But there's all kinds of things that you can use to prop up your work. So also consider that. Consider little standees, little photo stands, things to prop up your work, make it more visible, okay? Visibility is everything. Visibility is like 90% of the con, okay? If people don't see your work, then they're not gonna know you exist. It's very much, it's a good analogy to the actual world. It's a good analogy to the way that the actual art world works. And that is, if nobody sees you, then it's like you were never there at all. So make sure that people can see you. And that's my best advice for getting that stuff propped up. Okay, next up, make sure that you get a square reader. I would highly recommend that you guys get a square reader for your phone. That is so you can take credit cards because unfortunately, as much as we would like everybody to have cash and just throw it at us, most people, don't, they have cards. So make sure that you have options for people. And um, everyone really likes it when you say, oh, I can take cash or card, whatever is easier for you. Having that choice there is also a very nice thing and it makes it a, a much more enjoyable experience for your customers. All right, deals. Deals are another really good way to uh, help with your sales. Uh, put, up your, put up your posters and then say something like, hey, we have a special deal going on. Buy two, get one free. You know, I found that that one works the best. Buy two prints, get one free. If you're doing small prints, buy two small prints, get one free. It makes people get a little bit more interested because oftentimes people will say something like, oh man, I really want this one and this one. Ah, oh, man, but uh, you know, I'm not quite sure. And then when you tell them the sale, you know, buy two, get one free, and then they're like, oh, okay, well that's awesome. It totally pushes them over to that point where they're like, well, I'm gonna get these two that I wanted anyway and I'll get another one for my friend. You know, it's just a win-win for everybody. 
So I really like to do that type of stuff rather than, you know, always have some sort of like small deal, small, um, like an incentive, have a small incentive in mind. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that is about it. We talked about the stand. We talked about this thing is very important. I wish I would have had this a long time ago. This thing is a lifesaver. Uh, propping up your prints, taping them together. Yeah, and again, I really like the blue tape, guys, because it's so easy to remove at the end of the day. It's easy to pack everything up. You don't damage your prints that much. So that way, if you want to use them again at a later date, then you can do that. And we talked about meeting people. Booth buddies. If at all possible, please bring a friend. Bring a friend because it's so much easier to like like everything. If you have to go up to go to the bathroom, if you want to go around and look at the other con, you met a really cool artist, you want to go and talk to them for a moment, you know, it's it makes so much sense to just bring another person. Even when you are uh, making sales, you know, have someone there to help grab the prints or bag them or get, you know, you sign them, hand it off to them while you are, you know, taking the payment. You know, having two people at a booth is so much better. So ideally, bring your friend, bring your brother, bring your sister, bring your cousin, anybody to help you out for the time being. And tell them you'll take them out to dinner, you know, take care of their hotel or, you know, do something nice for them while they're out there helping you. Work out something, you know, work whatever you want out. Just don't let them take half, okay? Because I, I made that mistake once that it was like, no, it doesn't make sense, okay? You, you worked so hard to put all this product together. You designed the prints. It's your artwork. It's your booth. Do not get fooled into thinking that, oh, well, I'm, I'm here helping you. Why don't we just split it in half, right? Do not do that. I will find you. I will find you. I'm going to find your booth and I'm going to ask you if you're splitting in half. And if you are, then I'm going to ask for that other half. <laughs> okay. So yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you know, make, <laughs> just make sure it's fair and it's easy to it's easy to make, make sure it's fair. Just ask yourself, what percentage of the work have I put in? What percentage of the work has my friend put in? And then that's a good way to kind of gauge how you're going to split it, okay? All right. Now, the last but not least thing that we're going to talk about before we launch into the questions is food. Food. Because you need to eat. <laughs> and it's, again, it's going to be really hard to eat if you don't have a booth buddy. So if you're going to it alone, then I would highly recommend a big old tub of like trail mix, nuts, sunflower seeds, cranberries, all that stuff they put in there. Really good. You can just pour it out, take a handful. Uh, Pringles, chips, uh, fruit, bananas, bagels, and cream cheese I found are very, very good because they're just like really filling and they're really easy. You can have a whole stack of them. It'll last you the whole weekend. Uh, those are my best suggestions for food. Things that are obviously non-perishable. You don't want something like a yogurt or anything that's like going to spoil over the night because most often you're probably going to forget your food there and then it's gonna, you're going to come back the next day. I don't know if cream cheese goes bad. I really hope it doesn't because I totally was eating that like two, three days in and I didn't refrigerate it. Probably was bad, but regardless, still tasted good. So that's my best advice to you guys. Take some non-perishable stuff. Take some easy stuff to eat. And I think that is it. All right. Well, out of the way, it's time to launch some question catapults. And we got some good ones today, yeah. Good ones today, yeah. Lots of questions, yeah. Gonna answer really fast. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get to it. Alright, so I'm gonna answer these really quick. I went through and I read them early, so that way I could answer them very clearly and concisely. Navhawk is asking, is art school really even worth it anymore? The answer is no. Okay, next question. <laughs> no, <laughs> to elaborate really quickly, the answer is no, unless you're going to get a specific type of experience Art school is always a plus, but in the, this day and age, we're just looking at what you can do. The thing that catches our eye is not that you came from this school, but rather the, the level of your skill, the things that you're able to execute, okay? So keep that in mind. School is just another route to get you to where you wanna go in the art world, okay? So don't think it's the only way. Next question. Are 2D artists being replaced by 3D artists? Asked by Shafiq Kramwell. And the answer is no. I used to think the same exact thing. That's why I went to college, started learning 3D because I was like, oh no. Oh no, it was like Pixar and, and, and like all these amazing 3D animated movies and nobody's like doing Lion King anymore. No one's doing M Mulan anymore, Aladdin. There's no more 2D artwork that's needed in the industry. But then I thought about it and I was like, wait a minute. 
before they actually made the 3D model for Wally, before they made all those scenes, there's probably a 2D artist that had to mock that stuff up, that had to do the concept of what the robot was going to look like, of what the color palette was going to be for the entire movie. You know, and that's exactly what's happening. If you take a look, you know, get the Toy Story art book. Most of the stuff in there is a lot of 2D art. And, and of course, it's never going away. So don't worry about that, Shafiq. I worried about that. Absolutely not going anywhere, at least for the foreseeable future in our lifetime, which is all you got to worry about. So don't worry about that. Next question coming in from Sang. TLDR is, is it true? Drawing a monster is easier than drawing a human character. Yes, absolutely. And that is because monsters, you can get away with more crazy things. You, you don't have to make it super relatable. In fact, the more crazy and weird a monster is, the better, in fact, it is. Whereas when you're drawing a human, you want it to be relatable. You want it to be attractive. And you have, and there's specific like proportions that you need to like consider and make sure that you're getting right when you're putting all that together. So that is why you find it easier to draw monsters than sexy ladies. Next question. And I love all these questions that are coming in because they all echo the same, the same feeling. And that is, am I good enough? I don't feel like I'm good enough. I'm getting frustrated. And the first one is coming in from Grey Demon. And Grey Demon is asking, uh, I haven't had time to draw eight to 10 hours a day, like you said, in three Cal 328. I seriously don't remember saying that. I think I was denouncing that. I think I was denouncing the, the people that say, you need to have at least this amount of time to draw every day. No, it's not a matter of time. The, ma the thing that matters is that you're actually like doing it every day. You're doing something every day. You're thinking about something every day. You're improving every day. It's on your mind all the time. That's what's important. Um, and they're saying that, uh, don't know if it's bad for my, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, basically, no. Don't worry about if you're drawing enough. Just draw as much as you want, but it should be something every day. But don't think about it, it has to be eight to 10 hours. That's nonsense, nonsense, people. Next up, being frustrated with art, coming in from Dank Meme Machine. Now, uh, they are saying that they are getting inspired by the Splash Arts for League of Legends. Uh, they're saying that they've amassed bad habits from drawing traditionally. I don't know exactly what bad habits you could get from drawing traditionally. You'll have to elaborate a little bit more on that. But the question is, TLDR, how can I iron out the bad habits, become a better, better at digital art so you can start enjoying drawing more? Okay, so I'm gonna take a stab at this and I'm gonna say that Dink Meme, you are probably not taking enough breaks. You're probably getting frustrated. You're probably setting out to paint something and you're getting to a point where you don't know exactly what's going on and then you're trying to just like force it to work. You're trying to force it and make it work. And you're like, no, I got this. I can make this work. And then you're just getting more and more frustrated because you don't know what you're doing. In fact, what you need to do is take a step back you need to admit to yourself that you don't know what you're doing. And then you need to begin taking small steps of progress and letting yourself be okay with the fact that you may fail. Let yourself be okay with the fact that you may finish the piece and it's gonna suck big, you know. <laughs> it's gonna suck big butt, <laughs> to put it lightly. <laughs> so, and you gotta be okay with that because I'm doing that all the time, even still. It's like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm just gonna try my best at this. And usually it ends up working out well. And the reason is because I do it badly at first I take a break and I say, that sucks. How can I improve upon that? Then I start to just take baby steps, take baby steps, be like, okay, maybe I can just focus on this one little technique that will help me get better at this, that will help this picture look better. And that's all I'm gonna worry about. The rest of the picture, come what may, if it looks like crap at the end, whatever. Just be okay with failing and getting better, okay? So, and that will, that will kind of lessen the frustration. I think a lot of the frustration comes from things like what Carpe Noctum is saying. And they're saying stuff like, uh, I'm just not good at putting all of my things together. They're getting frustrated too. I can draw the eyes, I can draw the nose, the mouth. But then when it comes to putting them all proportionally onto a face and making it look good, it just, it gets out of hand. And that has to do with, well, this is sort of a slightly different um, issue, but let me go ahead and pull up this Widowmaker to show you what I like to do. So in this Widowmaker, you can see here that uh, you look at this final picture and you think that these are the lines that I started with, right? That I just kind of threw in those lines, but rather things begin, things begin very, very sketchy like this over here. I'm drawing in faces. I'm just laying in quick shapes to get my proportions right, okay? And I have a feeling that what you're doing is you are putting too much detail too early on. You're trying to refine your eyes. You're trying to re refine your nose. 
What you want to do is start off a little bit more rough, get your placements right, and then go in there and clean things up. I think that'll help you out a lot. Carpe, was it Carpe Noctum? Okay, now back to what I was saying earlier. The next question, needing help getting back into drawing. <laughs> Do you like how all these questions are about the same? They're, they're all like the same thing, people getting frustrated. And it's because you guys are not like being okay with admitting that, hey, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing here and I need to get better. And the best way to get better is not to get frustrated. Like you don't wanna work angry, don't work while you're frustrated. Take a break, focus on one thing and be okay with it turning out like crap. Move on, move on to the next thing. Okay. So, um, Void of Thought is saying, just to summarize, I'm looking at this last paragraph here. I think it's, I think I need a fresh start to, to begin to push myself forward. Hey, you know how to get a good fresh start? Take a break, take a break and focus on one subject. Focus on one thing. They're talking about, let's see, backgrounds, dynamic poses, head positioning, lines of action, expressions, okay? And don't focus on all these things at once. Say, okay, for this one piece, the background's gonna look like crap. The head position's gonna look like crap. The line line of action is gonna be completely wonky, but the expression is gonna be dead on, okay? That's what I want you guys to be doing. Focus on one thing at a time, okay? Because when you try to do it all at once, then it's gonna be overwhelming, and then it's gonna make you frustrated, and then it's gonna compile. It's gonna, you know, it's like anger leads to hate. Hate leads to the dark side. <laughs> whatever you wanna call it, whatever Yoda says, it's like it's a bad cycle. It's a snowball cycle, so don't fall into that. Last one coming in from Specific Brush. Asking about family and college. This one's a little bit more personal, but let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so uh, long story short, Specific Brush is talking about, hey, I've got, I'm taking college or I'm taking uh, these classes to get a degree in software engineering. I found out kind of maybe halfway through, I forget how far you said you were into it. Um, but regardless, you started on this path and now you're saying, I don't really like this. I feel like I'm wasting time that I, that I could be using improving my art skills. I really want to go to a college for art, but my parents say no. They don't want me to be a starving artist because everybody thinks that artists just never make it nowadays. And it is tough. It is tough. Like, don't get me wrong. But art is just as lucrative of a job as it ever has been. And I think it's only getting more valuable. So, um, so I would say, they're saying, should I drop out? Should I quit and focus on art or, or focus into getting into art college or should you finish your current degree? And what I would say to this specific brush is that really this is gonna come down to, um, really it's gonna come down to, there's no problem with having multiple options. There's nothing wrong with having your degree in software engineering. There's nothing wrong with having that skill. It's probably gonna come in handy later on. Um, and you can still be working, here's the awesome part, is that you can still be working on your art, even without a professor telling you how to do it. Whereas with software engineering, I imagine that's a lot more technical, right? You need like books, you need like a specific way, you need to learn the language, you need to do all that stuff. And you can do that online as well, but um, I feel like th there's more to be gained from someone teaching you exactly the path uh, with software engineering as opposed to art. At least that's the way that I feel. So don't feel bad about just finishing that out and then continuing, right? If it makes your parents, if it puts your parents at ease, if that's gonna make you feel better, most importantly, don't worry so much about what it's gonna do for somebody else. But if your parents being relieved is in turn going to relieve you and then you can then go focus on your art, then do that. But um, don't feel like it's just black and white, like you gotta go one way or another or like you're wasting time, you're gonna be behind. Hey, you can always pursue new skills. You can always be doing more than one thing. So just take some time to ask yourself those questions. And this is something that you're gonna to have to answer for yourself. But that's a good way to uh, get you started. Think about it as, I'm not doing this for my parents, I'm not doing this for anybody else, I'm doing this for me, right? The only person that really has to answer for the, for the things that they do in life at the end of it is me, right? I have to answer for this, this is my life, this is not what somebody else is directing me to do. I'm in charge here, okay? So keep that in mind. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for all those awesome questions. I know I've been away for a week, so I wanted to take some extra time to just really sync up with you guys again, really catch up, answer all those questions, and tell you guys about my experience. And I wanna let you guys know that doing cons is an awesome way to get exposure. That's probably the most important thing that I could tell you guys about 
uh, going out and doing cons, even just local cons. This is a great way to get people to know that you exist. So if you guys are curious about exposure, I would highly recommend investing a couple hundred dollars in yourself. Go out and get yourself a booth, print up, get some prints done, tape them all together to that photo stand, and then sure enough, people are gonna come walking by and they're gonna be like, hey, this is interesting. Hey, I like that character, I like your style. Hey, I like this comic that you're promoting for free, right? Because if you weren't yelling it, then I probably wouldn't be over here. Keep that stuff in mind, guys. And with that, I think we're gonna end today's show. So thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys go out and become some awesome little con artists. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next week. See ya. You guys stay awesome. Stay awesome. Bye-bye. <laughs> I really have missed you guys. I've missed you guys so much. Oh, wait. There was like... I feel like there was something else that I needed to say. Oh, yeah. I usually say the Patreon. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't really have a PSD to really upload. <laughs> oh, yeah. The last thing. I almost forgot about this. Don't forget to bring a smiling face. Don't forget to bring your happy little smiling face to the con because no one wants to buy art from a smug, angry looking artist, okay? So make sure that you look like this. Uh, standing is also encouraged, but you don't have to do it all the time. You can take a break, sit down, um, but bring that smiling face, bring that happy face, and you guys will have a good time. All right, we are ready to get out of here, guys. I'll see you guys next week, and until then, you guys take care. See ya.